the fan theory part where it's all complete conjecture and speculation. Oh, this is what drama channels live for. I did actually end up DMing him regarding that uh, bit of curiosity I had from his uh, B Shoujo Paradox video I had covered a while back. And well, he sent me a video. And the video is called The Nux Taku and B Shoujo Mystery. So I'm going to keep building. And we're going to find out what the f happened with B Shoujo and Nux Taku. Not interested in really digging up old drama, more of let's find out what happened. We don't need to we don't need to go after anybody. I hope. VTubing is a relatively new form of content creation, which has grown exponentially in the last few years. These animated rigs serve as the faces for a wide Can you send me the video? Oh, um EM, the that um the person that made the V Shoujo Paradox video that I had covered. And like I I was asking him, so what was the worst thing that in your opinion that V Shoujo did? And uh well he sent me this video that explained it. Oh yeah, it's also hard to tell when I'm talking about him sometimes because like his name is EM. I forget what it stands for. But he's pretty pog. Wide range of creators, both big and small, raking in millions of views each month and aggregately making tens of millions in ad revenue. It's really impressive that the genre has managed to explode so much recently, surpassing expectations of those within the scene to the point that it is currently one of the fastest growing genres of content. With it blowing up so rapidly, one would expect it to also become a breeding ground for internet drama, where vultures, like me, can then swoop in to profit from the hey, turmoil. Me too. But instead, at the top, these streamers have remained relatively conflict-free, mostly due to corporatism. Many of the biggest names are signed to agencies like Hololive and Vishojo, the former of which keeps their talent in line to remain as advertiser friendly as possible. But recently, the latter of these organizations has gotten itself into some drama of its own with a prominent creator, to the point that they are under fire for what many allege is not just negligence, but actual lies. But before I can swoop in, let's meet the players. To say that VTubing is new would be an understatement without elaboration. VShoujo itself, while being an extremely successful business, is relatively new, launching as recently as November of 2020, with seven streamers, Nianers, Melody, Zentrea, Silvervale, Iron Mouse, Fruit, and Hajime Hime. Whereas other groups focus- Ah, uh, the original. I need more weed. I forgot how many that actually was. Focus on YouTube. All of these girls have amassed huge followings on Twitch, where they nice. frequently pull very large viewerships. We're gonna make it out of here alive. You really think so? Snap out of it. Come on, Sensei. Oh God! Oh God! Yes, Sarge. Yes, Sarge. Yeah, I'll lead the way. <laughs> Okay, but I'm gonna be real. I just don't get Minecraft. Like I, I played it a while back, but I don't get Minecraft content. It's like kind of just maybe it's just the stuff I've seen. It's like all screaming. Thomas the turkey. Ah, uh, yeah, Turkey Tom. Unlike the business model for some other VTuber groups, multiple of these girls had large followings before joining Vishojo. Being in the group simply promises unique business opportunities for their pre-established fan bases. It's also important to note that Vishojo is the only American group, whereas the others are based in Japan. While it's unclear exactly how- There are more than just, um, like Hololive, Niji Sanji, and- V Shoujo, those are just the most prominent ones. 
Uh, we need more. Honestly, I think we do need more agencies like um, B Shoujo. But like, you know, more interested in helping smaller creators with great talent actually achieve their potential. Can you make another one of those with the other How many team? employees they have, it's safe to assume Giggity. that it isn't exactly housed in a massive office building. The service itself was co-founded by people from the content creation scene, who have a history in building online businesses. While these personalities do get a little zany from time to time in general, many of those in the audience see VTubers as comfort characters. They are hardly on the edge of their seat, waiting for some conflict or controversy to occur. And then, there's Nux. There is that the thing to be said about how parasocial relationships are exacerbated with VTubers because, you know, we use the anime persona that has that uh, separation of fantasy and reality kind of grade. If you see an anime girl talking to you on the internet, there's no way it's a real person, right? Oh, and hentai. Um, Nux Taku is a YouTuber and streamer. And I find him pretty funny. He's got more than 2 million subscribers, and his videos and content really revolve around reacting and interacting with other e-celebs. His videos on YouTube are frequently age-restricted and demonetized due to the suggestive nature of a lot of his content. I must Thanks. invade the most private matters of another's area of life. No, I don't, I don't want to dox them or anything. Don't get the wrong idea. I want to expose their browser history. <laughs> yes, and you thought I couldn't get any more evil. He's not. For me, it's like Rule 34 stuff. Not the biggest problem if that got leaked. I really don't care. Not the most ad-friendly guy in the world, but that's also what has made him so successful as of recent. In a time when many creators are moving towards a more sanitized he and won. clean area, Nux is not afraid to push the line in terms of what is and what is not allowed on social media platforms. It's important to note that Nux himself had an indirect relationship with Vishojo prior to the drama. He was actually friendly with half of their main talents before its launch being publicly associated really? with creators like Project Melody. But he wasn't popular with everyone. Nianers is a VTuber with hundreds of thousands of followers across all platforms. So Nux was friendly with Melody? Cool, cool. He's friendly with a handful of them. That's pretty pog. What the fuck does... Oh! That's where that goes. That looks cool. I do wonder what his problem with Nianners was. Known for her various song covers and streams. She actually has a lot of ties to 4chan culture going back a decade, but... I mean, I was in 4chan too. But, like, I got out. But since then has become a lot more tame in regards to her public image. Especially with the, uh, that. All of that aside, she's known hey, as someone of a clicky individual in fan down. culture going back a decade. But since then has become a lot more tame in regards to her public image. Especially with the, uh, that. All of that aside, she's known as someone of a She- I didn't know she did a song about Lolly. That's where that- Drama comes from. Okay. Clicky individual, taking great value in social groups and interpersonal relationships. A big part of VTubing is making connections for content and maintaining them, as many creators build off of each other's brands for content. But in late 2021, many of these personal relationships would be strained as a result of a community wide drama, which jeopardized the careers and personal safety of many talents in the industry. Was it because Nux Taku made a post about how Lollicon is pedophilia? And that's what sparked this because Neanners is a defender? Or enjoyer? Or something? In October, word began to permeate the VTuber community in 4chan threads and on Twitter about what was, supposedly, an individual or group of individuals who were committing malicious acts against VTubers. This included attempted hacking, 
doxing, and swatting of very- Yeah, it's soy jackers. There, or at least, <clears throat> there is a group of such individuals that use a soy jack Wikipedia page, essentially, which has like doxes on not just VTubers, but a lot of minority people, people of color, trans people, gay people, that kind of stuff. They hack, harass, dox, swat, that all, all whole nine yards. And they try to get the reaction out of you live on stream so that they can clip it. And they call it gems. Curious members of the community. Naturally, once word began to spread, many became concerned. But for the moment, it was mostly a behind the scenes situation among those involved. This story would officially break on the 20th, when Nux Taku himself tweeted out, Someone is trying to dox VTubers by masquerading as V Shoujo. I can't say any more at this time, but please share this around and be careful. They tried to dox me, but I sniffed them out and gave them the wrong information, so don't worry about me. I spoke to the CEO of V Shoujo, and I'm trying to untangle everything. I'll update you when I can. Many in the replies suggested that they had additional tips for Nux while others expressed a lot of worry over the situation. Much of this speculation around the details would be cleared up, but not until over a month later, with Nux's next upload to his channel. Someone is out there impersonating V Shoujo, the massive VTuber group. They tried to steal my info, dox me, and swat me, and they've successfully done this to many, many other VTubers. A clear departure from his typical content, this video instead described the situation in full. Nux even claims to have personally helped neutralize the threat and bragged about his ownage of these malicious actors. The details of this come down to a few specific events. Someone had emailed Nux and another individual under the guise of being a Bishoujo employee with the promise that they would be accepting him into the agency. They provided a lot of information that made them seem credible. But just prior to Nux forfeiting some of his own personal information, like his phone number and address, he decided to message Gunrun, the CEO of V Shoujo. At this point, he was told that the email was fake, and that another VTuber had been doxxed and swatted as a result of thinking that the email was credible. Through his own investigation and a bit of a bait and switch, so the CEO of <clears throat> V Shoujo actually confirmed that that person, that somebody had been Docs and swatted. Fuck's sakes. They're moving me to the forearm. Oh, the upper arm's tiny thing. Nux managed to get this person's information. Nux also says here that the I first knew of Nux as a friend of Lost Paws, we YouTube man. New Nanners as the pump song. Pump song? I'm out of the loop on that one. I know the pump mean what meme. What are we going to do on the bed on a chan? I know about that. The video itself directly involved Gunrun, the CEO of Ishoujo, as well as law enforcement. We found two of his YouTube channels, including this video, where he is actually admitting to, quote-unquote, being the best water ever. Get, get a look at this. Uh, see, I told you guys I was the fucking best water on fucking Discord. This is the most horrible thing you'd ever hear. Do you realize that people die of swatting? This video, titled How We Caught a Swatter That Doxed 12 VTubers, Including Myself, got quite a bit of information out to the public and received a considerable amount of attention. And the audience's reception of this video was positive. It's a very interesting subject. There's some drama, there's some investigation in Discord DMs. The video is basically a point by point about catching a nefarious individual. Vishojo themselves posted a statement shortly after its release as a thank you to Nux. This all seems to be going pretty well, pretty chill, pretty smooth, but the fuck ruined it. Saying, we appreciate you working with us. We've added our own response here to the events. 
They had publicly co-signed the video, giving the community a clear reason to feel that everything was now at ease. The malicious individual in question had their personal information successfully sent to law enforcement. With swatting being a chargeable offense, it seems they would be getting theirs in due time. Fellow creators now had plenty of information so that they themselves could be cautious of any copycat offenders. It was great to see the resolution to a very scary situation had been reached. Yeah, it uh it got it got way 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 worse. That's Oh boy. I I covered a Nux Taku video about betrayal. He might have been talking about this just you know more broadly because it was a video that I believe came out after this one. While audience scores for the video were positive, fellow V- Actually, no, I know it came out after this whole what happened here in this video regarding or whatever. Regarding, I know he put out like a betrayal video like a couple months ago where he talks about it broadly and I don't think he called anybody out specifically. VTubers posted statements of condemnation for Nux's video. They claimed that the very existence of the video jeopardized the safety of the entire community by giving attention to the swatter. They claimed that the information out there could lead others to do the same. And so their argument is don't report on a thing because there will be copycats of the thing. Really? I mean, yeah. Do, do people not realize that? And most importantly, they claimed that Nux was told not to post the video altogether, but had done it anyway. I'm so disappointed in you and hurt that you are doing this when you know what was truly going on. We asked you to take it down. We told you we feared for our safety and you didn't care. I am still beyond disappointed. The girls begged for days for it to be removed out of fear for their safety. And it truly boggles my mind how you could put your own video over your friend's feelings when they are directly involved. But, but what was that tweet about the thanking? I guess. Hey, Becca. Oh, yeah, we're going over this drama. Welcome back, Joestar. When multiple people tell you not to upload something in concern of their own safety, you don't. Apparently, Nux was told not to post the video and had done it anyway. Consequently, he had frightened and angered a community of people who told him not to post it prior to its publishing, and had even refused to remove it after its upload, despite their incessant requests. And while all of these responses were public on Twitter, on Discord, the aforementioned Nyaners posted a long private message saying the following, whether or not any of the information he gathered helped is that doesn't look like a private message. That looks like a message to her Discord community, which is very much public. If I am not mistaken. Did I grab the right piece? Yes, I did. Thank God. is beside the point, as releasing a video like he did about a very sensitive and potentially dangerous situation that involves me and many of my friends only draws unneeded attention to it for some quick views. When, if a video were to be made about this at all, it should have been handled with a lot more care and consideration. But for someone like Nux, who has consistently used my friends for clickbait views, and has done things like try and bait my friend into watching the Logan Paul Forrest video on stream, and secretly recorded a private call with another one of my friends without permission, and then proceeded to use said call to make a video, it's clear that our safety and feelings are not the priority. So, it seems as if V Shoujo isn't actually having a problem with this video. It sounds as if they are very happy about this. However, a couple of days ago, that changed. That changed when the co-founder of V Shoujo, Nyaners, who's been an internet personality going back a decade, I think, uh, she released uh, this Discord post specifically throwing Nux under the bus, saying that he was using them for clickbait, that it was all- Oh my God, this just seems so underhanded. 
Wow, this seems just like complete 180 on what was happening. Almost like they didn't have a problem with the video until they found a problem with Nux, and then they're just kind of jumping into this. I could definitely, most, I'm most likely wrong because I don't know the full context, but hey, who knows? all for clout and that he completely jeopardized their safety. This message was leaked soon after its posting, which is to be expected, and it made its rounds on Twitter and YouTube very quickly. Leaked. As is often the case when a, a very Discord large public server. figure or many large public figures work together to change a popular narrative, or express the same opinion, it changes in their favor almost instantly. Soon, not just their fans, but many of Nux's own flipped on a dime, with him becoming enemy number one for the fans and those they followed. Let the witch hunt begin. With everyone going after Nux, he knew a public statement was necessary. So, he made multiple of them, the first of which came in the form of a twitlonger. Here, Nux stated that he had directly worked with the Vishojo on the investigation, and that they had seen the video itself prior to its release. I worked with Vishojo on this for a while, as they mentioned in their statement in response to my video. I did show them my video before posting it, and was not requested to refrain from uploading. The rumors that I had posted it, regardless of being told not to, are untrue. In fact, leading up to the events of posting it, I was a part of a four-hour conversation with their chief cybersecurity officer. Oh my god, of course this turns into a giant he said, she said. Like... If, if you told Nux to not post it, where's the screens of that? Because I assume you wouldn't delete your own message if you're trying to keep your story straight overseen by an executive of Visho. Wait, which guy do you hate now? Ojo, and one of the members of the group. I sincerely apologize if my actions have caused any undue stress on anyone. It was not my intention. I was only hoping to contribute to keeping the community safe. This hardly swayed the public in his favor, with the reply still being littered with statement after statement of condemnation. You've done a lot more harm than good, despite your good intentions, and in the end, you were clout chasing. Not only that, you may have lost some friends and their respect. But throughout all of this, there, there seemed to be something missing. A puzzle piece that wasn't there, where nothing available could fit. Nux is a massive YouTuber. He has countless interactions with fellow VTubers and personalities on a weekly basis. He has many important connections with these personalities, which have contributed to a very lucrative business for himself. Do you mean to tell me that he never saw any of this coming? Refer back to Neander's message. Releasing a video like he did about a very sensitive and potentially dangerous situation that involves me and many of my friends draws unneeded attention to it for some quick views. Let's say Nux wanted to make the video just for money. If everyone had been telling him behind the scenes not to post the video, why would he post it? Wouldn't he value those personal relationships more than a few short-term dollars? We and couldn't the people saying that he shouldn't have posted it share the dms like you don't need to share every single fucking dm but share a dm proving you're saying what you're saying because otherwise it's a baseless assertion we know from his and where is this all coming from for nux Turkey Thomas, far right? Kind of got that vibe. Past endeavors, he's not exactly strapped for cash right now. The guy collected hundreds of thousands just a few years ago. I wouldn't be surprised if Turkey Tom is also one of the lolly defenders. But like more of a... Uh, I'm going to remain neutral. Because you can totally remain neutral after having issues with YouTube payouts prior. All at once, hundreds of thousands were transferred to his bank. So why would he rush to get out this video? But we all know that there are motivations beyond money, clout, views, status. However, none of these seem to make sense either, unless you want to believe that he is genuinely developmentally disabled. Even if he- Yeah, like he's already got 2 million on YouTube. Why would he need 
more clout unless he was just a completely vindictive person. And I've watched his videos since his shadow ban, quote unquote, where he does a lot more broader talking point video or just commentary videos where he's talking about stuff. And like, he seems like a genuine person to me. A little eccentric. He was trying to use this for clout. He had to have foreseen the eventual call out being way more detrimental than whatever promotion he got off of one video, right? It's not like the video was going to get 50 million views. It's a relatively niche situation that really only applies to VTuber fans, of which there are many, but it's not viral content. Something clearly did not add up. There seems to be a strong misunderstanding, but people are attacking each other left and right, and, and people are dogpiling Nux, and people are really good friends with Nux. I, I like Nux as well. Um, I didn't say anything the entire situation, and I felt like it was one of those situations that number one should have been handled privately. Nux removed his YouTube video about the situation quietly as the community continued to dogpile him. Nux decided to respond again, this time with a video. Included were screenshots and a pretty detailed timeline of events from his perspective of what happened behind the scenes. Specifically, there were DMs released that seemed to indicate Nux had full approval from the shoujo's cybersecurity expert to post the video before he released it. This, at the time, lined up with what they had said publicly. When I brought this to the attention of V Shoujo, they told me that they knew this was going on for a while, never said anything publicly, and as a result of that, I felt like V Shoujo put me and others at risk. Before posting that video, I was in a group chat with the CEO of V Shoujo, one of the girls, and the head cybersecurity officer. V Shoujo acknowledged that they knew about this water for a long time and did nothing publicly. I didn't make the video to endanger anyone, as the culprits were already brought to light. They acknowledged that they have no problem if I publish this video, and it's entirely my right as a victim of these water. Nevertheless, I showed them the video before up so they could let me know if I should make any changes or ask me to potentially not upload at all. They asked for changes like blurring things and denying the culprit's notoriety and I complied. My brother was the only person that asked me not to post the video because he was afraid for my safety beefing with us water but I thought it was prudent for the safety of others in the community, and V Shoujo mentioned that they appreciated me doing this public service announcement. I'm not saying this as a criticism of whether or not you should do a video. That is entirely your right to do so as a victim, and we don't have a problem with that. I appreciate that you are doing a public service announcement. Keep in mind that at this point, despite what many were saying, we had seen no evidence that Nux was told not to post the video prior, only that afterwards some of the girls were upset with him and that he didn't remove the video immediately. Meanwhile, Vishojo quietly deleted their own public approval of the video. Many took this as a tacit retraction of their own support, which would be validated just one day later, with a long statement from the company itself and their CEO. Titled Addressing Miscommunications, this document alleges a few key things. They open by giving a summary of the security risk posed to members of the agency and claim that it had been neutralized. This document will go through all major misconceptions about Nux's now deleted video and his replies and apologies. Reality, our cybersecurity team was able to work with law enforcement to obtain the target list from the threat actor. This list confirmed that only two phishing attempts were made, one to Nux and the other to Saki. They then gave their own timeline of events, beginning with this hacker creating fake emails from Vishojo and then utilizing the domain vishojo.org to target individuals via email. Nux and Asaki got this email, and once Nux received it, he decided to reach out to Vishojo's CEO, at which point it was confirmed as fake. Now, this is where Nux's timeline and Vishojo's begin to split. Whereas Nux claimed that Vishojo had approved of the video being made, here, the company basically makes the accusation that Nux had lied and they had never approved of the video being made. They state that at the same time they conducted an investigation, Nux was also sent a message basically warning him about the implications of posting a video like this. On November 1st, Nux made a tweet suggesting suggesting that he will be releasing a video covering the situation. Vishojo then enlisted their cybersecurity expert to run communications with him, and he then makes efforts to educate Nux on why this would be a bad move. This was ignored, as were the edits that they suggested. Here, Gunrun also claims that they never endorsed this video. In fact- Wait, wait, wait. You said there was claims. Phoenix made efforts to educate Nux on why this is a bad move, and which were are ignored.
Well, that is pretty warning. Appreciate that you're doing public service announcement. And then isn't the problem at all. The comment is narrowly specifically about praising that one fan that reached out. I'm 99% certain that is a fellow member of the harassment gang and not a fan. And then there was also... Yeah, they're aware of it. Tracking this actor for a long time. A lot of disinformation. I saw some monikers you had passed along where some of that disinfo deliberately dropped by the bad actor. <clears throat> In some cases, they used artifacts belonging to other harassment victims of theirs. I don't know if you plan on publicly exposing those pieces of contact information, but I wanted to make sure you kept this in mind. Not releasing any info about anyone. Yeah, I'm not really seeing that claim about Phoenix. Timeline and Bishoujo begin to split. Whereas Nux claimed <coughs> that Bishoujo had approved of the video being made, here the company basically makes the accusation that Nux had lied and they had never approved of the video being made. They state that at the same time they conducted an investigation, Nux was also sent a message based. So, like, they were aware of the video being made, but didn't actively tell him to not do that? Because I'm not seeing. Their information isn't going to be yours anymore. Thanks for your help, though. I'm sure you were that this individual impersonating Bishojo is driven by attention and are afraid your tweets or any potential content may shine a larger light on this would further encourage them to turn you, Bishojo, uh, VTubers, including Bishojo members and others, in particular important as the person has not been arrested yet and we're trying to assist police we're afraid of interfering with police investigation just want to make sure that this was passed along let me know if you have any questions though uh, my experience a lot of investigations don't end up following through i know a certain person that really should be behind bars but nothing's been done because well cops don't care I mean, that's pretty normal with far-right channels, isn't it, Becca? Basically warning him about the implications of posting a video like this. On November 1st, Nux made a tweet suggesting that he will be releasing a video covering the situation. Vishojo then enlisted their cybersecurity expert to run communications with him, and he then makes efforts to educate Nux on why this would be a bad move. This was ignored, as were the edits that they suggested. Here, Gunrun also claims that they never endorsed this video. In fact, Nux was told not to make it and did it anyway. But that just doesn't make sense. In this document, Gunrun never claims that any of the DMs between Nux and Vishojo were faked. They were all real messages. And in those very DMs with their own cybersecurity employee, it clearly showed that they were okay with the video being made, giving them the most charitable views of their own messages you could say that Vishojo was indifferent to the video being made, as long as necessary edits were also given to the video. And that's the most charitable you could possibly give them. It almost seems like they wanted it to be made. They said that they appreciated the PSA. And, as I said earlier, afterwards they posted a public endorsement, saying that they liked the video and had more of their own details to add. Thank you for working with us, Nux. Does this sound like they didn't want the video to be made? Vishojo claims that this post was just Discord diplomacy. They they say they wanted to give strong warnings, but in a nice way. Remember that Phoenix is treating Nux as we would any media professional, hence the polite tone. But if your way of asking someone to not do something is telling them you are fine with them doing it, saying that you appreciate them doing it, and afterwards thanking them for doing it, then you cannot be surprised or even critical of them when they decide to do that very thing and you get upset after the fact. 
The communication here was absolutely abysmal, and once again, a piece of the puzzle was missing. This specific message really is the one that makes me think that Nux had no way of knowing not to post the video. Their cybersecurity staff member said verbatim, I am not saying this as a criticism of whether or not you should do a video. That is entirely within your right to do so as a victim, and we don't have a problem with that. Meanwhile, in the post, they say, Vishojo never at any point said that he had permission, nor were we asked. This is a direct contradiction and does not add up. There is no way that their later statement yeah. makes any sense with the existence of the prior. Frankly, the claim that everything on their part in the DMs was simply being nice is an insult to my intelligence, and it's extremely frustrating to anyone reading it. To anyone reading this DM, they must have seen it as at least indifference to him making the video. And they framed their statement to the public as a cosign as well. So the quick- Yeah, this is why we say stuff like, if you don't actively oppose the things you don't like, you're complicit when they happen. Especially if it's like, you're fully aware and then after the thing happens, you're like, no, don't do that thing, but too late. What the fuck? Quick retraction felt like a backstab, and there were still many unanswered questions about the drama. Firstly, why was there such clear miscommunication between Shoujo and Nux? How could this ever have happened in the first place? It's such a massive blunder. Is there any sense of professionalism here? Even if you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, the company's actions seem downright dumb as fuck. And secondly, why did the girls feel so hurt? despite the fact that it seems Nux was given approval to post the video. He did apologize for not removing it sooner than they had asked once it was released. And wasn't he also in a group chat with at least one of the other girls? We don't know who it was because that was censored out and okay, but like... That would be especially bad if he was in the group chat with Nianners. Like, if Nianners was in that group chat and like, had engaged and like, Red saw what was going on and then after it came out she said something like girl if you had a problem with it the time to speak up was that group chat before it was public and this seemed to be in earnest so why did nyanners feel the need to make this long post alleging clout chasing when this particular situation doesn't look very bad on its own. Was she simply waiting for the opportunity to jump on him? Finally, is the only thing that Nux is truly guilty of not removing the video as soon as they had asked, as in minutes after its release? If that is the case, then I don't know if he did anything wrong at all. Considering he had approval from the very company that manages all of these girls, he may have needed time to make a decision. Especially considering the pressure building in the days following, can he even be blamed? We did warn Nux about releasing the video by outlining concerns from our cybersecurity team, but these are not the same as asking him to pull down the video. From our perspective, we believed these were strong warnings and we could have been much clearer on the risks. This controversy is an absolute mess. I've recorded this video a couple times. I tried to make it as concise as possible the answers to these it. questions would never truly be revealed in detail nor do i think they ever really will be it's like ah <sighs> it's a lot of he said she said stuff and we don't have the full dms we have to make assumptions based on what we know and what we do know is that it seemed the shoujo was okay with it Yay, making the same point again. On November 29th, Nux posted a video titled Moving Forward. Within oh, this upload, up. he outlines that he wanted to move on with the situation and not drag it on any longer. He seemingly had reached a point where he no longer wanted to perpetuate the drama. And if for a period of 24 hours when I got mega cancelled by lots of massive creators, I thought I was a goner. If you're not up to date with the drama, you're lucky because it was extremely ugly to the point that I didn't eat or sleep for days, but I am glad we're at a point that I think it is behind us. I spoke to almost everyone involved privately and apologies were exchanged. I don't want to bring this up more because at this point, it already became much more of a spectacle than anyone wanted and de-escalation is my top priority here. To emphasize this as my goal, I disavow the hate mobs and I always have. Please don't harass anyone over this. In fact, please don't harass anyone, period. It's amazing that this even needs to be stated. It makes A thing to be said is that the uh, harassment 
that you get, not only as a creator, but as a, or that, um, that you can direct as a creator is kind of inherent to the platform, but like, Flamenco, I've heard that name before. Like, a, a big enough creator can just simply disagree with somebody, and then boom, all their fans are disagreeing too. And then some fans take that a little too far, and it can constitute harassment. But I mean, it's it's got to be comparable to what was going on. I don't think... Honestly, I don't think anybody in this situation should have been harassed by other side's fans, but I wouldn't be surprised that, or I'm not surprised that it did happen. Sense. When you get into a situation like this, even if you feel like you didn't do much wrong, sometimes you have to just cut your losses while you still can. Nux is a successful guy. He has millions of followers, he pulls millions of views monthly, and when you're in that position where you're trying to maintain a business, eventually letting drama like this go on and not only hurt your public image, even if you are right, is just not worth it. He can't really be blamed for moving on when everyone else was willing to drop it. I've been waking up in the middle of the nights in a cold sweat with terrible headaches and heart palpitations. Was not fun, to put it bluntly, and despite everyone's mistakes, this was a good learning experience for everyone involved. I'll be back to making my usual content starting now. However, I and many others are of the opinion that Nux was kind of screwed. Was he eager to make the video? Yes. Did he want to profit off of the situation? A little. But every YouTuber wants to profit off of every video they make. He had Thank success. You. I don't have to make that point myself. Sweet. Fully conducted an investigation with Mudahar and Bishojo which resulted in a swatter being stopped. The threat was neutralized, so he wanted to make a video about what he'd been up to for the past month. As for the claims of Nyaners that he is a malicious actor and a clout chaser, well, to be honest, we don't have a lot in the way of that in this situation. We've seen zero evidence that he was told prior to the video not to post it. In fact, it was encouraged. And only after the fact did anyone take issue. There is no indication that he acted maliciously or exclusively to his... Yeah, I'm going to say, like, in this instance, it kind of feels like a self-report from Neanders here. Because, like, obviously, I don't have the full context, but, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they were made, if Neanders was made aware of, oh, shit, I forgot the elbow pad on that arm. If Neanders was made aware of Nux's video, because, like, Nux, he's pretty fucking big, and... It seemed, it really seems to me like Nux was trying to get the people's involved attention. Like, I'm doing this thing. What shouldn't I include? And then he's like, kind of, and then they're just kind of, yeah, don't worry about it. His own benefit whilst knowing that he would be hurting others in the process. And as a result, some of those who came out against him apologized in the aftermath. Now we have Nyanus from Vishojo tweeting, I'm sorry for the stress and confusion I caused. We've all learned from this and I regret how everything happened. We have all reached out in private to organize and clear the air with each other. And I'd also like to extend my apologies to all of our communities. Thank you. This all started because of a safety concern and the focus should have stayed on that. I'm really sorry. I let emotions get the better of me and reacted poorly because of an unfortunate miscommunication. Everyone understands each other better now and there are no hard feelings. We also had Vebe saying to clarify, everyone has apologized to each other privately a few days ago we none of this is really i mean i guess i shouldn't be super surprised that a bunch of big big name vtubers oh fuck aren't actually going to be getting into the details because like I mean, you're tied to a brand, and the brands don't like having that kind of stuff out there, of their talent. And Nux is also big enough to have his own LLC, I guess. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. It'd be smart to do it. 
We've all learned a lot from this and we'll do better going forward. I would personally, since I fucked up publicly, feel the need to apologize to you for my part in this and inciting people as well during this situation. As you stated, I do not condone hate mobs at all and wish to move forward on peaceful terms. I am sorry. People are upset at the moment. I'd like to apologize for how this went down. Communities got involved, confused, and at each other's throats. I made a tweet that got people riled up. I wish no ill will upon Nux either. Apologies have been made behind the scenes, and I hope we can move forward from all of this and learn and reflect. Most importantly, I will reflect. To my community, I am sorry I put you in an awkward position. I never try to get involved in things like this, but they are my friends and I love them. Was it right to jump in? I felt and saw my friends being harassed by members of a community. So, yes, I had to. Could it have been handled better? I don't know. A lot of things have happened, and many things are unknown. But, we are all here now. I want to move forward, which is what I'll be doing. The audience is quickly divided in two ways. One side, probably the larger demographic, is okay with moving on and is glad that the drama is over. Ah, the intelligent grown-up people. Eh. While others still have questions and really want to dig in. I'm not a fan of how this is ending. I don't mind moving on, but I don't approve of the basic apologies as a resolution. I believe there should be consequences to the actions of Vishojo and the girls. However, Nux will not be getting a- They're talking about consequences like there needs to be more harassment to the creators that they don't like. Jeez, I wonder who's really supporting harassment with that tweet. A formal apology, it seems, from some involved. Criticisms of the shoujo are <sighs> as warranted as ever, and the questions people have about the situation remain unanswered, despite God, many in the community good. expressing concern with the effectiveness of the organization. Many on the cybersecurity side of things scrutinized their actions in the days following, and the company as a whole took a huge hit in terms of its reputation. This brings me to my conclusion about the shoujo, because unlike what I thought before, V Shoujo actually put us in a lot more danger than they let on. V Shoujo's statement that they got the target list of the doxer and that only two targeted people were docs can go straight out the window. That no longer matters because several people are working together to dox VTubers. Other. Yeah, it, and it's not like five or so. It's a lot. It, it's more than that. Again. There is a Soyjack wiki, Wikipedia, essentially, a Soyjack wiki about the different victims of these people. And they celebrate it. But we can't, what can we even do to really stop them? The police don't really do fuck all. Uh, yeah, like people dox over the lightest shit sometimes because they don't. They don't think it matters. They don't think it really makes a difference. And then there's the some people that knowingly SWAT or SWAT people knowing that depending on what they say to the cops, they might be going in guns drawn and that could actually be, you know, that could lead to somebody's death. And like, that's... That's why I think, in, at least in some places, swatting is considered attempted murder. Or at least some people consider it attempted murder. Okay, C1 and 2. The nice thing about building a model for a while is you get used to the colors. Or, like, the... Uh, Numbers. Others, while trying to remain neutral, still questioned the entire thing and wished for everyone involved to make up amid some mistakes. Um, I do not think this was like an evil thing where eight girls got together and was just like, let's destroy man. <laughs> Again, lots of miscommunication, a lot of mistakes were made. With so many questions being proposed, many have come up with their own potential explanations to fill in the gaps. Oh, the fan theory part where it's all complete conjecture and speculation. Oh, this is what drama channels live for. 
Now, for the next part of the video, we're going to discuss a few theories that have been tossed around for how this could have happened. Some have speculated that Nux appears to be forming his own VTuber group separate from Bishoujo. This began with many noticing the word redacted was placed in the Twitter bios of Nux and many of his associates. I have noticed a lot of indie VTubers have redacted in their Twitter name the past couple days. What's going on with it? Is it related to the recent drama in any way? This might sound crazy, but from what I've seen, it looks like Nux is getting involved in the creation of a new VTuber group. On Twitter, these VTubers have redacted next to their names. Nux has invited a lot of them into Rant Cafe already, and has just recently gotten Yuzu on the podcast. It seems that my theory might be true. This was later discussed in a number of other threads on the VT board of 4chan. While some of these- Ah yes, VT, the best source of VTuber news on the internet. Might as well get your trans news from TTTT threads are removed, others still exist in full, where users seem confident about its existence. It's Indeed, many content creators who were considered independent had this word in their names, perhaps as some kind of covert promotion for this new group. Considering that, if real, this would pose a direct threat to Bishoujo's business. This. So, some the speculate spurs. that they caught word of this and decided to basically backhand him and bamboozle him prematurely with the communication. They tell him it's fine to post the video, he posts it and gets dogpiled, is unable to defend himself, and then they post a statement after, and he gets buried. But this kind of internet espionage seems a little ridiculous. It would be extremely- Yeah, I mean, it's terminally online Twitter users playing detective here. Well, we're at right now. Jeez, I would have been the heel of the boot, at least a different black. It's kind of plain there. It's really risky for them, and they'd have to assume that Nux would literally never respond. Even if the idea that they're forming a new V2. <laughs> only if Nux would never respond? Yeah, like a fucking drama channel is going to not respond. Oh yeah, it goes that way. It's going to not respond to fucking V Shoujo calling him out. Tuber group seems pretty plausible. The latter seems kind of conspiratorial. <laughs> and not in a good way. A second theory, and one that- Yeah, this guy's definitely far right, because there's no good way to be conspiratorial. You can enjoy lightly getting into it, but if you go down the rabbit hole, you're going to start thinking everything was the fault by the Jews sooner or later. Just saying, there is such a thing as the old right pipeline feels like it could be a little more real, is that Bishoujo was trying to save face because of their own incompetence with the phishing incidents. In order to not look bad to the girls that they had signed to their agency, they published statements afterwards to make it look as though everything was handled, when in reality, behind the scenes things were not treated with nearly as much severity as they should have. There was clearly some internal incompetence at play, we can say that much. But you said that according to the people that you corresponded with Bishoujo, they were aware of this happening in terms of like people faking domains to like ask themselves us as Bishoujo since May. When I was doxxed, uh, the doxxer had linked to me Bishoujo.net and Bishoujo.org showcasing Nyaner's dox. Mm hmm. And it was post-dated, like, March. Okay. And Phoenix confirmed that he knew about it when he talked to me and got my info. And as a result, this theory also posits that they wanted to discredit Nux so that their own missteps would not look as bad. Part of me is starting to think that Nyaners is actually upset that this video is making V Shoujo looking really, really bad. Let me, let me just kind of break this down for you guys. A VTube group, Bishoujo, knew that there was a malicious actor going around using their name, using internal documents from their company, and were using domains that resembled theirs and did nothing to forewarn other VTubers. I've looked this up. I can't see a single example of any of the people who applied to be a v, uh, v shoujo vtuber 
getting any sort of email saying, hey, by the way, V Shoujo staff will never ask you for your personal contact information, such as your phone number, your full legal name, and all this, in the initial statement of accepting your application. Please be wary when answering any emails asking for this sort of information. A very bare bones, very basic thing that any company that was aware of this should probably be engaging in. It sounds a lot less... Like, holy shit. This is really something that's like... I'm gonna go with gross negligence. Like, seriously, how can you know that there's somebody out there doing this scam and then just not... not doing anything about it, really? Like, you gotta do something at least. Were they going to like a cyber crimes division? Did I miss that part? It's like Nux was doing this for clout and putting the VTubers in danger. And it sounded a lot more like V Shoujo, like was just super irresponsible and negligent and didn't even release an email saying, hey, don't give private information unless it is from our direct official domain. Here's an idea. Let's see if this one activates your almonds. From this message from Nianners, we can see her saying that Vishojo did not want Nux to post the video. She could be lying, you could say that, but let's just go with the idea that she is telling the truth. She genuinely believes that Vishojo did not want Nux to post the video. This obviously contradicts the communications between Phoenix, the cybersecurity rep from Vishojo, and Nux. So here's an option. Vishojo thought that the video was a good idea, or at least wouldn't be harmful, hence why Nux was never told not to post it. But then the video came out, and Nianners and many of her friends had their little blow up moment where they freaked the fuck out. And so Vishojo, coming to the realization that they were extremely mad, thought to themselves, oh no, it can't seem like we didn't handle this issue properly. They can't know that we were okay with the video being made, and we're fully aware of this cybersecurity risk for months, let's tell them that we told Nux it wasn't okay to post the video. And then the entire situation would spiral from there. But in the end, that's just a game theory, and all evidence is circumstantial. You can't completely confirm one way or the other for now. The actual intentions and specific point-by-point -point actions of Vishojo are unknown. For now, God damn it. Like, yeah, all that speculation was pretty, pretty fucking dumb. But I mean, that's what most drama speculation is. C6. Oh, I'm doing the thighs now. All parties involved appear to have moved on from the situation. Discussion around this publicly has ceased, and anyone involved really wants it to quiet down, clearly. While that's fair enough, ultimately this still leaves many details up to speculation and guesswork. Audiences are really left in the dark despite the clear inconsistencies. Hence the title of this video. I've been Turkey Tom, thanks for watching, and until next time, leave me alone. Well, that... Hmm. Yeah, that that was that was sus on V Shoujo's part. I'm gonna go with <clears throat> That's where I'm ending off. Oh wait. I'm still building. Yeah, it I don't really know what else I have to say to that. It's just hmm. I hate this fucking he said she said drama that you can't really prove one way or the other and usually honestly most of the time it it, it winds down to miscommunications and shit so fucking annoying especially when it gets made public when it really does not have to be made public like crying out loud but I mean, what can you do? It's the inherent mindset of narcissistic individuals that like to create content online.
Especially VTubers, it seems. What the fuck? <laughs>